state newton's second law of motion now newton's second law of motion is a law that describes what force is right and newton's second law of motion describes force as that the net force acting on a system on a system is equal to the rate of change of momentum of that system change of momenta so which means that whenever there is a momentum change happening inside a system that means that it was a consequence of a force so that's how newton's second law of motion defines force next you have a car of mass 850 kilograms and it tows a trailer in a straight line along a horizontal road as shown so here we have a car 850 kilograms it's attached to a tow bar and then to a trailer and it's moving on a horizontal road the car and the trailer are connected by a horizontal tow bar the variation with time t of the velocity v of the car for part of its journey is shown so initially it starts with nine meters per second starts to move uh, accelerate so the velocity increases until it goes to 14 meters per second and once it does that it attains a constant velocity for a couple of seconds and then it starts to decelerate and go to 11 meters per second we want to calculate the distance that is traveled by the car from t equals 0 to t equals 10 seconds. So what is the distance traveled by the car from t equals 0 to 10 seconds? So this is 10 seconds. So let's draw a vertical line from here. And the area under this curve is the distance. As this is a velocity time graph, so the area under this would be uh, velocity times time the, as in the units right which is the units for displacement so the area under this thing it is a trapezoid so it would be half into the sum of parallel sides so this is 9 plus 13 multiplied by the height of the trapezoid which is 10 seconds so that's how we'd get the distance covered a from 0 to 10 seconds so we do that over here so it the distance is equal to area of the trapezoid which is half into 9 plus 13 sum of parallel side times the height and this gives you 110 meters now at time t equals 10 seconds the resistive force acting on the car due to air resistance and friction is 5 10 newtons so there at 10 seconds there is a resistive force that acts on the car as well the force that is opposite to the direction of motion and there is some tension in the tow bar as well as 440 newtons for the car at time t equals 10 seconds calculate the acceleration so what would be the acceleration of uh, the car at time t equals 10 seconds we can look at this graph at time t equals 10 seconds and we know that from 9 to this point this one the acceleration is a constant value so if i were to find the gradient of this slope this slope that would give me what its acceleration is throughout this entire line right and that acceleration would be the same acceleration that would be at time t equals 10 seconds. So we'll just find out the gradient of this thing. So we can say that at this point, the coordinates are 10 seconds and 13 meters per second. And at this point, the coordinates are 0 and 9. So you can just find the gradient of this thing. So we have 10, 0, 9 and 10, 13. So 0, 9 and 10, 13. So the gradient is equal to the acceleration which is uh, 13 minus 9 divided by 10 minus 0 which would give me approximately 0 0.4 actually it would give me exactly 0 0.40 meters per second squared so that's the acceleration of the car now use this answer to calculate the resultant force that acts on the car so the resultant force that would be acting on the car is the mass of the car times the acceleration so it is from newton's second loss 
F equals MA. So the resultant force is 850 kilograms times 0 0.40 meters per second squared. So the resultant force is 340 newtons. Now 340 newtons is the resultant force. We want to show that the horizontal force of 1300 newtons is exerted on the car by its engine. So the horizontal force that is exerted on the car by its engine would be the sum of all the forces that are acting on the vehicle, right? And that would be the tension 440 newtons and the fric friction. So these forces must be overcome by the engine. And then it you have to have a resultant of 340 newtons as well to get the car moving. So the horizontal force, so some Fx should be, first you have to overcome the resistive forces, 510 newtons plus 440 newtons. And then you have to give it a resultant force of 340 newtons to get it going. So the car engine should be producing 1300 newtons of force. From this, determine the useful output power of the engine. So what would be the useful output power of the engine? So of the engine, right? We know that power is given as the product of force times velocity. So the force that is produced by the engine is 1300 newtons. So 1300 newtons. And it's moving with what velocity is, remember we are doing it for time t equals 10 seconds. So what's the velocity of the car at time t equals 10 seconds? It's 13 meters per second from here. So you go back and you put in 13 meters per second. So the useful output power is 1.7 uh, into 10 raised to power 4 watts. Part C says that a short time later, the car in part B is traveling at a constant speed and tension in the tow bar is 480 newtons when it's traveling at a constant speed. The tow bar is a solid metal rod that obeys Hooke's law. Some of the data for the tow bar is listed over here. The Young's modulus E is specified. The original length L0 of the tow bar is also given and the cross-sectional area of the tow bar is also specified. All right, now we want to compute the extension of the tow bar, which is just the same as the change in length of the tow bar. That is delta L. So we know that Young's modulus E is defined as stress over strain. And then we know that stress is defined as force per unit area, while the strain is defined as the change in length over original length. So if I put these back in this thing, I get E is equal to force per unit area divided by change in length by L. And this gives me for change in length as so this thing goes over here. So it is change in length by L multiplied by E is equal to F by A. So change in length is F L divided by E times A. Now the force acting is 480 newtons. The original length is given as 0 0.48 meters. The Young's modulus is 2.2 into 10 raised to power 11 pascals. And the area, cross-sectional area of the tow bar is 3.0 into 10 raised to power minus 4 meters squared. This gives you the extension of 3.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6 meters. Next, the driver of a car in B sees a pedestrian standing directly ahead in the distance. The driver operates the horn of the car from time t equals 15 seconds to 17 seconds. So for this much time, he is pressing the horn. The frequency of the sound heard by the pedestrian is 480 hertz. The speed of sound is also given. Calculate by using the figure the frequency of the sound emitted by the horn. So we know that if the car is moving, the frequency that is observed by the pedestrian would be different than the frequency that was emitted by 
the car itself. Now, we want the speed from 15 to 17 seconds. What is the speed? If we can find that speed, then we can use the formula that Doppler's effect gives you, which says that the original frequency is actually equal to the frequency, uh, sorry, the, the observed frequency is equal to the frequency of the source times the velocity divided by, this velocity is velocity of sound, by the way, divided by the velocity of sound minus the velocity of the source that emitted the sound. So the velocity of the source Vs is found out from the graph from time t equals 15 to 17 seconds. So if you go back from 15 to 17 seconds, so this is 15, this one is 15, this is 17. So you can see that his speed is 14 meters per second. So if you go back now, you all you have to do is put in the values over here. So Vs is 15 meters per second. Uh, sorry, uh, it was 14 meters per second. And now FO is given, which is 480 hertz, the frequency observed by the pedestrian. FS is what we want to find. V is given as 340 meters per second as well. So you rearrange this equation as FS is equal to F0 times V minus VS divided by V, which is 480 times 340 minus 14 divided by 340, which gives you the source frequency of 460 hertz.